How you doing? I'm well. When you're at the markets, you do get fake items, and this is not the Mona Lisa. How much would you do for the lot? What's your thoughts on? Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to meet you. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. We are back for another week at the flea market, guys. It is a really nice day. We've got a lot of vendors that I'm seeing over here as well. We're trying to buy this stuff and flip it for a profit on eBay. So let's get in there and we'll see what we can find this week. How you doing, mate? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm really well. I'll tell you much about them. They belong to my son. Oh, do they? <laughs> he set the prices, did he? Yes, he did, yeah. Fair enough. See some of them have got... Uh, these are nice. Prices on still, yeah, so. 60 on those. Okay. Yeah, whatever. No, all good. Thank you, mate. <laughs> now, while I'm out here hunting for items, I'm on a bit of a mission. My goal is to try and spend no more than 100 bucks today, and I really want to try and flip it into about $500 plus worth of resale value. Oh, these footy shorts are cool. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm well. Shorts are two for 15, are they? What size are they? They're between a men's medium to large. Medium to large. They do say the size of the tag. Yeah, okay. Did you do five each? Yeah, so five, 10, 15, 20, 40? Awesome. Yeah. Lucky. 40 bucks? Yeah. All right, I'll go get all some money out, but Thanks. easy. All the clothes got to go, hey? I don't know. Thanks so much. Unreal. Oh, no absolutely. stress. Much appreciated. Yeah, other ones, not shorts, but they were bloody the big shirts. Oh, yeah? That's why it's huge. Where are they? Oh, really? They're down just on the other side, directly across from here. On the far side? Yeah. I'll go and have a look. Found it. Wow. The jerseys are $40. They're 40 How much would you do for the lot? $1,000. $1,000 for the lot? I should buy them all individually then. <laughs> um, a little fake. <laughs> They are all fake. Good morning. morning. How you doing? Good, thanks. That's good. How much on the shoes? Sixteen. Would you go ten? I'd go twelve. Twelve. Let's go twelve. There you go. Thank you. Much appreciated. Have a good day. A bit worn, but they were a really good shoe. Yeah, they're too worn, but they were in good condition. Bundy run for a dollar. Believe it or not, that would do well. Oh, that's, is that the big bass willy? I just come from there, so they must be back in there. Hello, mate. Mate, I love the look of this. <laughs> Incredible. You're not selling him? Oh, mate. 1999. Well, I can see why he's going to play for you all day. I, yeah, I, I know about them and I haven't hardly seen them before. They're very cool. Do you know if this one works? It does work. It does work? No wiring, no remote? Um, actually, I do have the remote and I didn't bring it, but I can send it to you. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I don't have the. But yeah, I see I him. Yeah, I thought I forgot something. <laughs> <But> <laughs> no. I do have the remote, yeah. so if you're interested, I can uh, send it to you. DV 410. That's a pretty standard one. Is it? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. the code on it. I'll just see what it's all about. Easy. Thanks, apes. Brax. How are you, my man? How much do you? What have you bought today? I bought some things. You still got the hat on? You ready to sell it to me yet? Three dollars, remember? Three bucks? Nice. Hey, find something good for me that I can put in the video. I'm well, mate. How are you doing? Good, mate. I watch you all the time. Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good can to you meet you. It? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. <laughs> I sent my sister. My sister watches you too in Sydney. So oh, yeah, that's yeah, epic. Yeah, so you're here just for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, just for a little bit. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, have you yeah, found much cool. today? Oh, well, we're selling, so it's the... Oh, this is your... This is ours, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't so, realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's epic. So how long are you on the Gold Coast for? Are you? Ah, uh, no, we live um, out of Flagstone. So, oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Epic, it's our man. first time here. So, oh, sorry, your sister's in Sydney. So my sister's in Sydney. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I'm out of the hat game, but I love this rip curl hat. <laughs> Low profile. No, nah, I've got to say no, but I love it. <laughs> we'll come back, mate. Good, good yeah, to meet you. All, good, all, all the nice best. Absolutely. These are cool. Sorry, mate. Do you remember these? Yes, I had one. So did I. 1999 Sega Toys. How much on these ones? Four each. All right, I'll take those two. Thanks heaps. Appreciate that. Have a good one. I just, it says Sega Toys, 1999. I remember them when I was a kid. We're just gonna test to see what they're worth when we get back home. So stick around to the end of the vid and we'll see what these things are worth. I remember them though. How you doing my man? Not too bad. How much are you doing on those? Um, ten. ten. on them? They're a size nine, are they? Were they yours at all? Uh, yeah, they were. They were? Yeah. Do you like your basketball? Uh, yeah. Are you a Kyrie fan? Oh, yeah? yeah? I like these, mate. I'll buy them off you. Have a good morning. Oh, yeah. Um, that's why we want to get here. Do we know if these ones work at all? Mate, I plugged them in and they show power. Okay. So that's as much as I can say. Okay. I, I know that when they got packed away, they definitely worked. They worked prior. They did, 100%. How much are you doing on uh, the VHS? 10 on that. Everything's negotiable, so. Yep. And there's no remote or anything with this one? No, mate, what's there is what's Just what it is? That's no worries. And you know what? In saying that, five bucks and you can have it because it doesn't have a remote. All right. And then what have we got in here? <laughs> I will do the VHS for five, mate. Thanks, bud. VR610. See, reason why I'm going to do it is because this sort of a thing you can easily, um, you can do for parts. If it doesn't even work, you can just sell it for parts. So, easy for five. Provided it's worth over 100 and you might be able to sell it for like 60 for parts. The footy boots, how much on those? $10. 10. Uh, do you know what size they are? Yeah. The big ones or the Yeah, I was thinking the black and then the yellow as well. Yeah. So I think they're like a um, like ladies or men's, um, nine to ten. Okay. They're a bit smaller, yeah, aren't they? Small, like kids, like... I'll go ten on those. Yeah. Yeah, no I'll stress. Incredible. Thanks, Steve. Nice. Much appreciated. How we doing? That's good. Yeah, there are a couple in. 50 cents? That's the best deal I've heard today. Oh, I might have to have a look. That's awesome. Uh, we've got a few down here. If we can build out a collection of these, there's two more. There's eight that we need. We've got half. Oh, there's another one. We've got five. We've got five there. That's actually not the Mona Lisa. Oh, you're kidding. Well, that one's a fake Mona Lisa. <laughs> 
Not the real one? Oh. When you're at the markets, <laughs> when you're at the markets, you do get fake items, and this is not the Mona Lisa. <laughs> hey, this one I've got at home. I've got that at home. That's a good one. Not the Mona Lisa. <laughs> It's a sore throat, isn't it? Oh, my ears and my sinuses. Everything. Everything really hurts. <laughs> I'm, and I'm in marathon mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. So I'm, my proximity to Courtney this week is going to be limited, I feel. Because <laughs> I cannot be getting sick because I run the marathon on Sunday. Uh, pretty good day yesterday at the flea market. We have a few bits and pieces still on the ground here. Um, these were such a good buy. I didn't really harp on it too much in the video, but I was so excited when I found these. It was actually the first item of the day, Courtney. The best items are always at the start. Really? Uh, we had eight pairs in the end and we got them for $40. Courtney's actually gone ahead this morning and listed them all up for $30. Um, so what's that, $240 worth of value and we only pay 40 bucks for them. These are the sorts of bread and butter winners that while they're only $30, I'm always happy to pick them up. Um, sell through rates, people are really passionate about their favorite sports teams and these are all genuine. Uh, there was a bunch of jerseys there yesterday that just weren't mm. genuine as mm. well. Um, so you do need to have a bit of an eye for it, um, but I've been in the sporting industry for quite a bit and uh, I understand what is genuine and what isn't and they are gonna be a good, good purchase. Uh, we've got a few sales that we've looked at this Monday morning as well. Uh, Courtney, if you want to just put the camera over these, we're not going to be talking about any of these, but you can have a bit of a look there. Um, I'm really happy to see these sell. Probably the worst purchase I've ever made um, to try and have these go on to sell, but we got a $25 sale price in the end. We're not making any money on that. Um, but all these items, the shoes are like 40 odd each. This game here on the Nintendo Switch went for about $37.50, so that was decent. But as you can see, just the standard stuff that we sell, but nothing too exciting. Um, I wanted to show you this as well. This is how our month finished for the month of June. Today is Monday the 1st of July, and unfortunately we finished $700 short of our goal of $11,000. So, a little bit disappointing, but we always this year, every single month, we've averaged between 10 and 11, and we've only hit 11,000 once. So, pretty much the work that we're doing, we know that we can expect 10 to 11,000 based on putting $500 every single day into eBay, so it's nice to see there is some consistency in sales, but a little bit disappointing to obviously miss out by 700 bucks when the start of the month just got off to a really good start. Kind of flatlined a little bit at the end there. But new month, we're in July, things are ticking along really well. I'm not disappointed about that. Uh, I wanna take you through four sales. This is the first one that Courtney's gonna be putting into the mailbag. I only bought this one here, Harry Potter Cluedo. Uh, last week in the thrift and I bought it because I always say brand new and sealed is always the best way to go about board games. Uh, we do have a couple of board games that we're still trying to sell. Um, that one's a great one there, Lego. Uh, we've got two copies of that actually, so they should go by pretty quick. And we've got that Wogopoly down there as well um, with Geonopolis. So we do sell board games. These are pre-owned, but this one here got a quick sell through rate. It sold for $60 and we paid 16 last week in a thrift store. So I kind of like sealed board games as a bit of a category in the thrift. Um, we always go about our shipment of this with butcher's paper, and then we put a bunch of bubble wrap around it. We don't actually put it into a box because it's already in a box, uh, and they always seem to ship off fine. So butcher's paper, just this stuff here, and then some bubble wrap, which I might need to go and get a little bit more of for Courtney before she does her post. Um, but Cluedo, Harry Potter edition, not a bad sale. Now guys, this video is sponsored by Matt at flipweekly.com. Matt is documenting his journey via newsletter, exactly like I do here on YouTube, but he's putting it into newsletter form and he does a really, really good job at it. I'm reading this one every single Thursday and I'm always learning a lot along the way. So definitely go and give him a follow. He's trying to grow his subscriber base. It's completely free to join. All the highs, all the lows, all the learnings that he's picking up along the way, he's sharing everything. So I think this could be really good and useful for you guys as well out there. A very big thank you to Matt for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back into the sales. Next one we have, guys, is this New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 Men's Running Shoes. Um, these are really nice. I knew they'd sell fast. I actually only listed them on one day, a few days ago. Last week. <laughs> I don't know when. But US Men's 12 as well. And they look pretty new as well. Um, yeah, we've got a... 56.95. 
sale price for them. Yeah. They'll go into a medium satchel though. They'll be a ten dollar shipping price. Yeah, it'd be about ten to twelve. But yeah. a nice average sale price there at fifty seven. Definitely quick quick sell through rate. And condition is good. Yeah. So yeah, nice shoe sale there. We had a couple of other shoe sellers you can see, some footy boots, some mm. netball and some more running. So New Balance, a good brand. This was one that I found in the thrift last week on a really quiet day, and I just had a bit of a hunch that it might do well. It was only $6. It was a vintage Victoria Bidar VB um, cooler, uh, cooler bag. And uh, again, a bit like the shoes, a bit like the Cluedo Harry Potter, these are all really fast sell through rate items, and I don't believe they're viewers purchasing them off the channel because I didn't film them. Um, this item wasn't filmed, it was just in store. Not to say that a viewer hasn't obviously watched and then perused the store and seen this and wanted to buy it. Um, but I don't think it was a viewer sale. As you can see here, this one is designed in or created in Australia, AZ Designs. It's a vintage brand, born in 93. So this is an old school uh, cooler bag. And I know that um, beer brands like this do really, really well. So any sort of paraphernalia relating to beer brands, I'm always interested in. Um, but I, on a bit of a hunch, there were no comps on eBay for this cooler bag. I just thought buying it for three to six odd dollars, whatever it was, um, I thought I could get around 35 and I got the full asking price of $35, which was great. I also ended up selling for this person two other items. Um, so this one here was a bundle of Pokemon the movie and Pokemon 3 on VHS. Um, this was out of a large Pokemon VHS uh, purchase that we made last year. We actually sold all the volumes off, but we had a couple of spare movies left over. Um, so I did that as just an individual bundle. Um, that one went for about $25 odd dollars. Um, but awesome in the fact that they've bought them all in one sale because it means we've obviously only got one shipment cost uh, to see them all leave. Um, this one here as well that I picked up when I was over in America last year. Um, this was found at the Goodwill Bins. I only paid about 20 cents for it. Uh, I love LA, LA Lakers. How about Bronny um, playing for the Lakers, getting, getting drafted, Courtney? I know, that's crazy. Crazy, hey? Yeah, yeah. LeBron James, Bronny James, mm. big fan of the basketball, aren't you, Courtney? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Courtney has absolutely no idea. No, you, I do. you handled that pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so nice little one on the back there. I think this was an opening night tea, maybe, I don't know. 60th cool. anniversary of something or other. Anyway, 20 cents, they bought that for about $17. Wasn't worth a lot of money, but when it's bundled in, all of that came to 75 bucks. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey. You don't like cats, do you? Nah, stay away. Oh, <laughs> this isn't our cat. No, it's not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Next one here, guys, is the Sega, Sega mm. Mega Drive console um, with its remotes. We got this one from Selwyn, actually, and we got a $100 sale price. I think I only listed this one, like, maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, I think you did. Um, so, yeah, we continue to sell consoles really well, as long as, <laughs> as well as video games, um, as we talk about all the time. But... Another fast sell through rate with this one. And a hundred bucks. Yeah. Really, really good sale price of a hundred. Mm. Video games are doing well. As you can see, we've got no more big bundled listings up there anymore because they no. sell fast. Yeah. And all of these games here are now condensed into this wall, which is a bit of an update, isn't it? Yeah. I wouldn't have seen that. We've yeah. got them all in there and we don't have anything more. We've actually put books uh, into this one right here. And because of our culling, we sold the hats to a viewer of the channel, so they're now all empty and I'm not buying hats anymore. We've also got two empty tubs here and we've got an empty tub here. So, you know, three, eight tubs there. We've also got a space in here because they're gonna to go to the uh, op shop, those magazines, we're not gonna keep them. Mm. Um, so that's nine tubs that we've now got free and we've still got space in here and we can still make some more space with a few things down here. So there has been some movement mm. uh, here in the garage, but what it's done is for the start of the new financial year, 1st of July, it's put us in the position that we want to be in where we've got some room and we've also got a private buy coming today as well, Courtney, which they don't know about. Mm. Uh, 12.30, um, we have a large allotment of stock coming through and uh, we're going to take you through that when he turns up in a couple of hours. So. Courtney's going to go ahead and finish off all of those sales, um, putting them into the mailbag. Most of these listings are done. We're almost complete with our listings for today. Um, but when this big load comes in at 12.30, we'll sift through it and we'll start listing more up and try and crack into this week. So it's a big Monday. Um, stick around. There's going to be some fun stuff coming into the garage soon.
Before he turns up, we do have two hours up our sleeve. I wanted to run you guys through the numbers for us from January 1 to July 1, the first six months of this year. Um, we're down 9.7% in revenue, but I'm absolutely not disappointed by that at all because our profit is slightly above what it was in the first six months of last year. So we're actually doing better, even though our revenue is 9.7% less. And you might be a bit confused about that as to why the profit's gone up. And where it's come down to is the fact that we've been able to increase our average sale price by 10%. It's now up to $38.56. We're trying to get our average sale price to $40. And the whole reason behind this is because you've seen price rises in thrift stores and you've also seen the um, Australia Post rise, I think even today. Mm. I think it starts today. There's mm. another Australia Post price rise. So because of that, Courtney and I have been working really hard on stripping everything that you've just seen um, for low ticketed value stuff to try and get the average sale price of our store up to a much more, I guess, healthier position. I think right now it's sitting at about $35 across the 1,300 items that we've got in store. Um, but the average sale price is $38.50. So it's, it's a really tight gap there. It's only about $3.50 difference, which is really quite strong. I recommend everybody check your store to see what you've got active and then also what you've got as your average sale price and just compare the two. If there's a massive discrepancy of having your store listing value super low, you might need to do what Courtney and I have done and just cull out some low ticketed stuff to try and get that number closer together. Um, the other reason as to why the profit is still sitting in a really healthy position is because our quantity sold is 18% less. So while the revenue is down 9%, we've actually sold 18% less in stock um, because we've had an increase in 10% of average sale price. So it just means that we're spending less money on postage and that's the idea of it. A higher average sale price means less orders have to go out um, because we're still only listing $500 a day. So that's a bit of a syn uh, synopsis, I guess, on the reason why I'm happy to be 9.7% down in revenue. We've done $61,000 in sales, so just over $10,000 a month. And we're trying to get to $130,000 by the end of the year. And we've got Black Friday coming up as well. So I think we should be able to double it to one hundred and twenty-two, dollars And then we should get a couple more, I guess, sales come through with the Black Friday period to get us up to that one thirty. dollars and we did $130,000 last year. But again, because of this drop in postage, we're gonna be in a much healthier profitable position out of that 130,000 at the end of this year because of it. So hopefully all of that rambling and all of those numbers made sense. Um, everyone can put up a revenue figure and it can look all big and nice, but at the end of the day, what truly matters is what your actual profit is. And I think over the last 12 months, I've analyzed that and tried to critique that more and more than I ever have before. Um, and it has been culling out the crap and only focusing on strong sell-through rate, high average sale price, um, which has put us in a pretty good, efficient position. We've worked so much less, haven't mm. we? Mm -hmm. To get these numbers, we've worked so much less. Like we've sold 300 less items. Mm. That's so much work to, to mm -hmm. list and ship out 300 more items. Um, we haven't had to source as much either because we're only listing $500 a day. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, all that makes sense. Hopefully it's something that you guys can maybe adapt to your own business. If we wanted to scale this, well, we'd just buy more and we'd list more. We might list $1,000 a day, but we don't want to. We, a lot of people will say, you know, those numbers aren't full-time numbers and they're not full-time numbers. I say I'm a full-time reseller because we've got the YouTube channel that makes money and we've got the eBay business as well. So $130,000 on eBay, YouTube channel as well, together, they make a full-time income. Super unique. Not a lot of people out there doing it like we are, but we can only document the journey that we're on. And uh, it's going along pretty well at the minute. Nice to meet you. Hello, mate. How are you? We've got the camera on. Oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. You cool with that? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> clip this in. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Back here again. Really good to see <laughs> you. Um, <laughs> Have a look at it. I can explain. We'll throw them all in. Yeah, no stress. There you go. It's nice when it's already pre-agreed upon, not have to negotiate or anything. It's just no, job done. Um, but I'll, I'll go again off here as well. Um, yeah. We'll keep doing it, eh? Until you slowly clear it out. Count that up. I'll transfer you the remainder. Small wheel is missing one. Small wheel is one, yeah, okay. A small wheel actually does half decent. I didn't know that, but it does. And the rest down below is like Xboxes, Wii's. Oh, games underneath. Games underneath. Um, like, I think there's PS1 and 2, like, guns and everything. Guns Mine. down there too. There's heaps. 
So we initially um, we initially teed this up because um, Aiden's got shoes, games, uh, DVDs, everything that we want, but we've gone with DVDs and video games, but he's just shot through some extra stuff that he's had in his store, some cameras and things like that. So um, we're gonna go with 600 bucks for this allotment, but it's not gonna be the only purchase. We're gonna make more purchases as well off him and just slowly buy out the whole store. Um, just based on cash flow, we could only do the 600 today, but based on this, there's so much, so much value in it. All those games are there, are above fifteen dollars. Above fifteen. Um, and I, the games over here were comped with like a console as well. Oh, with the bundle lot. Yeah, bundle lot. And so. look, we've put them up there, and the bundle lots are gone, mate. Yeah. yeah. They just sell like we sell them off for, like three bucks each, and in an allotment of ten for thirty, and they go. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll transfer you the rest to get it six hundred. Works. Yeah. See ya. See, see ya. Thank you, mate. Right. Great to see ya. It's <laughs> a lot of stuff. How do you reckon we best tackle it? No. No, this is, uh, this is gonna take us well into next week minimum. Maybe even two weeks. We list 500 a day, so that's um, seven fives, 300 and a half grand. I think it could be like seven grand here. Do you reckon? Mm, maybe not. Maybe a week and a half. <laughs> maybe a week and a half. But he was saying some of these items are like three, 400. Like, there's a camera in here that goes for big money. Look at this. We've got some boxed Super Nintendo. Ooh. And then we've got whatever that is, Super Drop Zone, Super Nintendo. I mean, anything, anytime you see a Super Nintendo with its original box, you can account for value. I'm really excited to see what all of that stuff there is going to comp out to be because he was sort of talking some big, big figures there, three, $400 items. He was saying something about this TV show here. Um, so, you know, this makes the job a whole lot easier, guys. If you're buying stuff in bulk, you're not having to run around to the op shops like we have been doing for the last few weeks. Um, since Selwyn about a month ago, this has been the next big pro uh, bulk buy that we've had. Hey, Courtney. Yeah. So uh, let's let's maybe separate everything and try and group them up into actual shows so we can then start to list it. Well, as always, I've come to realise that it's always a bigger task than what I think it's going to be. So I'm not going to actually go through anything on camera in this vlog. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a breakdown of the haul. It's just a lot of DVDs and a lot of video games. You'll be seeing it on the House of Mumba, my eBay page, over the next couple of weeks because Courtney is going to madly list all this up. Um, I'm going to leave you with a thrift trip, guys, right here. Some thrifting content with some really cool finds. Thanks for being here for this vlog. Good to be back on YouTube for another week. We'll see you soon.